yeah, it's it's really powerful though to to have that intention to, to to truly speak to call for. That's something we've been learning a lot together about communication. Of how, yeah, how we have the yeah we've been learning a lot about in communication how we have the communication spaces and to call them forward like hey let's have a one on one. Daddy. Something I was never aware of before that it was such a powerful way to communicate and then. On top of that, by saying, let's have a one-on-one, -on -one. Uh, I want to have a clearing, or let's have a clearing. It's almost in increasing the intention of the one-on-one -on -one and focusing it on something that has to be worked. And uh, yeah, it's really interesting to see how these conversation cards, it's almost like something that exists, but we're almost never aware of them. And by just seeing them physically, it's, they're bringing them forward to the moment by saying Dude, this is this is what we got to work with together and i can resonate with a few of them like griefing i see that one as important and, and we do talk forward to it but now seeing how it's really something seeing it so tangibly it's so helpful because it's usually just almost in the back back of our minds that it's something that we can do as humans but we don't uh, recognize it consciously mm. yeah all right yeah Okay, maybe I'll go through um, some of the other conversation types just to kind of give you my my feel for them or something. Mm -hmm. So that in in so has anyone ever had uh, training in nonviolent communication? I've always wanted to, and I've just read the book a bit. Okay, so you read the book. So you you okay? So um, I'm not sure what's that guy's name, but the guy who wrote the book Nonviolent oh. Communication. Marshall Rosen. Rosenberg or something yeah like that that has impacted the whole species right in terms of communication wow, really? in terms of, of making things better and again what I saw was it the spell of it was a healing conversation and so like like let's say you're coming to me and I can see that you're in a lot of pain and I can see that you're you want to get something off your chest now in a healing conversation you don't want to usually give feedback, criticism, ideas, anything. When someone is, is in pain, all they want you to do is to shut up and listen. Mm -hmm. And if you do nothing but hold compassion in your heart, that is the greatest gift you can give another human who's in pain. Like when you to see a child, right? Mommy, mommy, I'm pain. And the mother says, yeah. And, and the child just has to say it to the mother, and as soon as mother goes, then the child's okay and gets better. And, and I don't think anything ever changes for human beings. We just want someone to listen to us after we've gone through something that's traumatic. And a lot of our pain inside that's held there is because we never had the healing from it. And so if you can just give your presence to somebody, it's a huge gift. So that, again, it, it's like being able to recognize because a lot of time when people are in a healing convo, they don't know it. They're just like, you know, you, a lot of people, they're carrying it around all the time. And if you just listen to them, I mean, I don't know about you, but people pour things out around me because it, I'll just listen. And then they, it just comes out. It's kind of natural. So another conversation type is appreciation. It's like, you know, Orge, I really appreciate that you were the first person to come to me to ask me to share what I've been learning for 25 years to teach you. <laughs> like my appreciation is beyond immense because I've been sharing this stuff with people and, and, sh and going, this is great stuff. And, and everyone's like, yeah. <laughs> You know, so, so my appreciation for you to kind of like, to me it was like pouring water in the well to get it going. And it took me out of my research mode into teaching mode because essentially I've just been waiting. I didn't think what I had was good enough until people were coming to me to ask me to teach it. I didn't want to start to get up there and start to teach it. If, if th That was just my mindset. It's pretty insane, I know, because I, I think I came up with stuff a few years ago that was still pretty good. But I... I had a frustration around a lot of things. And so my appreciation for you is to recognize what I had and to ask for it. And that's why you guys are number one. You guys are the first group to do this. And I, 
I've been surrounded by hundreds of people for, for years. And people don't, people haven't said, hey, why don't you teach me this? And that's been, you know, one of the hardest things in my heart because I, I feel as if I've come up with something pretty good and people around me just doesn't, doesn't seem to matter. And, and that's whether my pattern block, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I could never comprehend why, but maybe it's because I got a funny thing on my head and I'm running around to, you know, trying to save the world with a, with a broom. I don't know. So uh, the, there's a sy synchronization is another conversation type. And that's when you're kind of, you're, you're synchronizing your timing. That's what you guys are doing when you schedule together. Mm. You're synchronizing, right? Because if you don't synchronize, you're kind of like everyone's, it's hard to connect together because everyone's always doing their own thing, but you got to get into a rhythm and a flow and a pattern just like us, like once a week, once a week, once a week, mm -hmm. same time. And it, and if you go out of that pattern, like we did once, it kind of throws things off. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, 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 if you got your Monday meeting, do the Monday meeting and don't miss the Monday meeting. It's a very important thing if you're scheduling the week, right? So uh, as a team and as a community, as you bring people into whatever you're doing, you're synchronizing them. You're synchronizing them to your rhythm and once they get it, they'll get it. So that's a very important conversation. Um, grieving. Um, I don't know if you guys grieve together or if you've ever gone to a grieving ritual, but I, I've been to the Maladoma Somme came to Canada and he's an African elder and he's their, their whole tribe is based upon grieving together. And I, I've never, I always grieve alone. Right? I, you know, and I'm lucky if I grieve ever. And I was at a ritual where there was 50 people down by the water, like just grieving and crying and all the pain that they've been through. And I've never seen that in my life. And it's, it showed me that there are certain rituals that have been taken away from our culture. And because of that, we're, we're, we're insane because we haven't healed the grief that we have. And so grieving is a little different from the healing convo, knowing that somebody's just gone through a death and, and, and they need to grieve. And, and that conversation, again, is, 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 is it takes the awareness to know that either you or they need to grieve and that you need to either help facilitate it or just to, to realize what's occurring. I mean, it's pretty obvious someone's sobbing in the corner, they're grieving, but to kind of realize, you know, okay, what do I do now? Like bring them some water, bring them a bowl of water, put their hands in the water. That's what he said. It's just like, People need to get their hands in the water when they're grieving. Get some cedar, hit, you know, stroke them with cedar, uh, cry with them, hold them. You know, it's, it's a different conversation. Conflict resolution is another conversation type, and that's, that's like an industry. <laughs> you know, bringing people together who are in conflict, and it's kind of clearing is a little thing. Conflict is a big thing. You know, conflict happens because you didn't clear. Conflict happens because something major happened and now you've got to go into it. And I, I did a conflict uh, mediation once with a company and there was a, an owner and a salesperson and for months they hated each other and the, and the owner wouldn't fire this guy. And so he brought me in to, to mediate and I, I sat them both and I heard from both sides and, and both hated each other. They were pissed and I sat them down. And the only process I did was, okay, you're going to speak and you have to listen and you cannot interrupt. Because usually when conflict happens, people, they just interrupt and they get into more of an argument and it never gets anywhere, right? So this person, as a mediator, all you have to do is say, okay, you speak and you listen. And then they go for, let's say, 10 minutes. And then you go, and then they, they have to sit there and they have to listen. They have to listen to the perspective. And then you go, okay, now you speak and you listen. And all you do is mediate. You just sit there. And you're the neutral force because both those people respect you or both those people paid you to get through this. And they have to follow you as a facilitator to do what you're, you're saying them to do. And so the other person spoke. And they were so polite and respectful. And it was a beautiful thing to watch because both finally felt heard. And then the salesperson who's kind of like 2,000, 3,000 a month, 
The next month went to 20,000, went to $30,000 per month. And the field was cleared between them and everything was fine with a one hour conversation. Like one hour, and I don't know, 100 or $200 and then the sales went from 2,000 to 20 and 30,000 a month. That's how much leverage happens when you can actually heal the conflict between humans. And, I, and again, if you're creating a community, you, you want, these are so important in terms of, you know, what kills communities? It's the conflict. It's the unresolved conflict. And it's the little things. It's the little things that bug people. And then you get irritated. You don't want to be around the person. And then you got the team meeting or the group meeting and three people in the room hate each other. That happened last week and that wasn't cleared. And just the energy of the, nobody wants to be in the community or the group anymore. So if you want to build a loving community, these teaching people, these specific skills and having cards to go, this is what it is. This is what it is. This is what it is. Uh, I think will, will really help you to attain what you want to attain, right? Because you guys are, are the core. You guys are the ones who will be feeling everybody and sensing everybody and knowing. And now, you, you know, these are skills that can help you. Um, which, is, there any, is there another combo type I didn't uh, touch on? Maybe synergizing. The synergizing convo is, it's kind of like, I like, I had this basketball coach and he used to go, energize, energize. And, and no one knew what he was talking about, but he was basically saying synergize. He, he wanted, there, he knew there was a flow of energy between basketball players that happens when you're at your peak performance. And you're just, you're just you know, you, you, the way you shoot, the way you play, the way you move, you're, the team is in synergy. It's a beautiful thing to experience on the basketball court. And usually it happens when people are very generous. They, they pass the ball a lot. They, they're not looking like they're like in basketball, there's something called a ball hawk. And so it's someone who keeps the ball a lot, shoots a lot, isn't giving the ball up. And it, it kills the, the flow for everybody because everyone should have a turn. And so synergy is like when everyone gets a turn and everyone feels a part of it. And so synergizing is like, well, how do we synergize our gifts? Like, how do, how do we, how do we take what we got and, and, and make it better, you know, and, and everyone's excited. Synergizing. <laughs> uh, is there any other, appreciate, what's, what's, did I go through them all? Uh, connecting. Okay, connecting. Okay, connecting that, and you can, let's say connecting's in the present moment, because there's also, I, I just mapped them out on the time cycles. So connecting to me is, is the kind of almost like the deepest form of human beings being with each other, you know, where you're truly connecting with one another, where there's no negativity and both people want to connect and you're not, you know, you're not talking to impress. You're not talking to um, get something. You're not talking from your ego to, 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 you know, so much communication is either trying to get attention or to bring attention to yourself, self-aggrandizement kind of things like that. So connecting is just like connecting from the heart with the other person and sharing whatever you want to share between each other. And I think it's, you know, it's one of the most beautiful of the conversation types. Mm -hmm. That reminds me a lot when I uh, play music with other people. And we almost just get to listen to each other, but also to connect and hear what we're singing or that what we're sharing. And it's almost like a space where we can just be connecting openly without feeling judged and truly just ah, a little free expression. Yeah, it's just really, really good. Mm. So connecting. Um, how, how would you initiate a, a conversation about connection? Like what would you mean? An example of like how you initiated. Well, it, it a lot of these conversations may you, you may not like clearing is something you may specifically say I need to clear with you. I mean, you may kind of go I want to connect with you, but it, I think it's mm -hmm. it's it's more setting the scene. You know, environment so important around something like that. Light a candle and 
and uh, you mean you might call it being romantic or something but i think it's it's you make the point of being with the person and 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 saying to the person i want to be with you and i want to share some intimate space with you and i think a lot of the times communication is just it just happens you know we kind of bump into each other and we may talk but we 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 don't go out of our way to truly be with that person and connect in a manner that makes the person feel seen and makes the person feel heard and you know and and when you're adding like again you you can start with an appreciation right you can start by appreciating the person and then going into a connecting and and the thing is you know at some point what i've learned is that most humans don't really care about these conversational types they just want to talk but what these do is these are like a structure that dictates what is occurring they're like an they're the abstract structure that is sort of saying okay you know they're feeling and then they're going through grieving and as a facilitator or let's say as a communicator who's very conscious of the conversational types that are occurring you have the edge right like most people are kind of unconscious in how they communicate and they don't have the skills and so the idea is that you will be training people on how to do these things and you'll be becoming more aware of yourself and going oh wow you know that was a healing or oh wow i really want to connect or oh wow like like there's a big difference between going through life wondering when these things will occur and having the ability and skill to make them occur so i think between any kind of intimate romantic relationships you know these these are very very important and that's why i started with those i mean i could have brought in the, the logistical conversations at operations we could talk about logistics and we could talk about briefing and reporting but you know most people and that's the boring side of life right i mean it's i don't give a shit about you know that kind of stuff you know for some people but it's what they want is the heart connection i mean to me especially women right the men can get into logistics all they want but i think deep down humans want deeper connection with each other they want more love and they don't know how to get it because their families didn't have it businesses don't have it the high schools didn't have it and so we have a shield you know we don't share who we are we hide our thoughts and our feelings and we have this kind of pretend person that kind of goes through the social pleasantries of talking but inside you're going come on there's got to be something more here like 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 mm-hmm. wow uh huh wow like that's huge yeah i see it wow yeah yeah i didn't see it so clearly thank you for your sharing it's uh like so insightful to see how um how uh yeah just just the simple fact when you're talking towards connection and it almost shows me that all of these aspects of conversation if there's not a a connection they usually don't come fully forward and they're almost miss it's understood or missed yeah we can't tap into them because Mm-hmm. or we yeah almost we we all have a need to grieve but if we don't have that connection or that intention set for us we we usually never do together i see wow. so so if you look here at the card and again the the intention the intention the card itself is very powerful mm-hmm. just to know it and to have it but then you can program the card you can pr- you can program the field because essentially if there is a healing conversation going on you can then set the intention of compassion wow you can bring your heart into that and so if you're looking at your values and you're going okay let's say i've got a presentation which is a marketing conversation and you're looking now okay we value inspiration so essentially your field will be will be programming that conversation with inspiration so if you're giving a presentation about the community you value inspiration and so you you want to inspire the people you're presenting to and so 
if you're not being inspiring, you, you can say, well, I, it's, it's not good enough. We, you know, we have to inspire them to want to join what we're doing. And so the way you're going to speak has to be motivational, has to be uplifting, has to be, you're inspiring them to participate in what you want to do, right? So when you use the conversational types to format what you want to communicate to people, the values are the, the energetic conduits. They're the intentions that program the conversational field. Yeah. 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 Compassion would be a value. What's that? Compassion would be a value. Like passion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, the Buddha, like, I mean, one of the highest virtues or, or values is compassion. And so compassion is, is, you know, bringing your heart into the space and, you know, truly understanding and knowing what the other person is going through without having to go through it. But it's like, if you've, if you've experienced a lot of pain in your life, you can have a lot of compassion for other people because you know how hard it is. If someone is deep in depression and deep in pain, they feel like they're, it's going to be there forever and they, they don't know how to get out of there and, they, and they're reaching and, and you're being compassionate and that compassion is what they need because all they want is to have a caring human being give a shit about them. Most people, they don't give a shit about nobody. And if someone's in pain, they just walk right by. They don't even know. And we give our, our compassion or our best to the people we love around us. But we tend to kind of like everyone else is just out and, 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 is, and I mean, it, it's kind of natural. We can't give ourselves to everybody. But if you just have a compassionate nature, like the Buddha or Jesus or whoever are the higher spiritual prophets, they live in compassion. They have compassion for everyone because they've opened up their heart and they, they know that they're the same. They're, they're coming from the same place. We're all God. We're all one being. And we're little specks in the mind of God. And when you reach that place, you see other people very differently than if you're in a very competitive mindset, a fearful mindset and a, a negative mindset, because then you just interpret all humans as, you know, whatever, however you do. So to me, spiritual progress is, is bringing these values into your presence and being, and then people sense it around you. You don't even have to speak about it. They just know that you're a loving being. Sweet. I'm very happy you, you initiated us with those cards. So they, they were very powerful and in, like right in there, right in the spot. <laughs> yes. For us, they great tools and like something to, wow, it's just like a lifetime of practice. Yeah, we, we really mm -hmm. needed those uh, cards, they find for conversations. It's one of the great landmarks to let us know. Well, where, where we are at or what we need and how to cope with the different aspects of them because many times mm -hmm, we can open conversation but not even having the right intention to cope with each each part that's asking for attention or how to do so. And the thing about the card is again kind of like let's say as a product it can be re reproduced easily. You can pull it out of your pocket. You can, you can say hey man you know why don't we synchronize <laughs> it, it takes it out of the mind and it brings it into the arena where other people can see it. So it takes it from the unconscious into the conscious. And, and again, once you have it, you can share it with others. The whole idea is to share this knowledge. If it works for you, you know, whether you want to charge people or not, it's up to you. You know, with of course your family and your friends, you want to, you want to pass it on, but if you want to make a living or, or, or use it to, you know, that, that's up to you. Um, it's, um, something that's coming to my attention as well um, I find this is relevant for our group we had a heart, heart circle yesterday to hold each other and I find we truly open for conversation and to listen to one another but I now find that having this clarity on these different ways of opening up for conversation and resolution it makes it so much more clear how we can hold these hearts circles for each other with a, a more clear way of 
truly, truly helping one another instead of creating conflict out of trying to listen, but actually not achieving so because we think, oh yeah, we're having a conversation, so we're just all speaking, but it can get so tangled instead of having the clear intention of, wait a second, you know, there's layers, wow, and having these tools to be able to see it's, uh, yeah, it's great, that's, that's something I, I didn't have before, and I find this changes the whole work of holding the space for, for us to heal and communicate and resolve com conflicts and Mm -hmm. Wow, synergize. I see that they're all, they all play part in this uh, heart, heart circle, yeah. Wow, wow, so in a circle we can access all of this. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah. Very, very impactful, very powerful words and like, very connected together. And, uh, well, thank you guys for listening and for uh, allowing me to do that. Um, again, I, I haven't had the opportunity much, and I feel like I'm ready to teach. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think you took a long time to get here. I tell you, <laughs> and, and it came because you know, I mean, we we teach what we need to learn, and for most of my life, I've been a very horrible communicator, and I disassociate, I disconnect, I I get irritated, and. I, you know, it's it's not it's not really great life. You know, you, you end up being alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think we come to the session. I, I'm not going to give any homework, and so this is the end of session eight. And I guess if you guys want to, I, I would I'd be willing to continue into an, another module if you want, and okay. um, we'll we'll just see you next week. Mm -hmm. I see. And thank you so much, Elijah. Thank you, Elijah. <laughs> thank you. Very, very appreciated. Okay. Yeah, much love like to you all. Share, share with the group before thank we you. leave, uh, if possible. What's that? Is it possible for me to share something with the group? Of course. Yeah. It's uh, Well, yeah, it's just, uh, I, I wanted to share it since the beginning. It's just, uh, if, um, well, first of all, I appreciate a lot of your teachings, and I find that yeah, it feels amazing to have somebody with your experience sharing with us. So it's amazing to listen to you and learn. And um, yeah, I just had this uh, dream. I think it was like four or five days ago. And it was about the planetary guardians and it was so powerful. So I just feel, uh, yeah, I feel called to share it with you because, well, you're initiating us into this path. And um, yeah, so it was a really interesting dream. I was... At one point I was with Serena and we were kind of like working on the community and then we had to cope with a few things there and it was like we didn't want to do some things that they were doing so we kind of like slipped away from it and kind of did our own thing. Then we saw that by being out of it and not doing the things we didn't want to, we weren't being part of the community's needs and that was kind of behind spinning it up. But that was one side of the dream. And then after that happened, I, um, well, yeah, it was really powerful. I was having a dream with crystals and uh, energy. And there were this group of people on the streets and they were pretty much like this. They had this huge crystal, a blue crystal kyanite. And I was with them and we were just passing it to one another just with our hands, like without touching it, we were just floating. And then we would receive it and we could like, it could levitate around us and we were passing it and it was a lot of energy we were moving and I was learning how to do it. And it was kind of effortless when we were all like passing the ball or how you were saying in synergy, like truly passing it. But when I tried to control it by myself, I say, okay, I can do this. It was really hard. But when we were doing it collectively, it was really easy. And it was all of this energy we had and we almost wanted to, to help the people but we were like on the middle of this city and yeah it, it was as if people were getting afraid from what we were doing and we weren't very helpful at all it was kind of the opposite and then so the, this was our position and then the dream shifted from that and and it transformed into this place it was like a meeting room and it looked very similar to where you're at right now we were like in outer space floating above the earth and we were all meeting as planetary guardians and we all had, a, it was shown to me that we didn't need to use really big crystals to have more energy or more power. We could only use little talismans as these symbols of energy and power. And um, I've been wearing 
like a yeah like a crystal with myself or a talisman which is round and pretty much each planetary guardian had its own talisman and we would um so we were all sitting on this table i actually drew it out because my dream told me to draw it out i guess i can share it with you guys if if that's helpful it was just um yeah it was just a powerful vision and i don't always share my dreams but this one i asked and it seemed right to share it so the um the table looked like this and then each each one of us we would sit on the octagon and and in our right there were like a little place to put our um our um, our talisman and by putting it in there just with intention we would pretty much like log in and check in and say okay we're here ready to connect and I was doing this through the dream space too. It really seemed that we could truly do this as planetary guardians if we had the right intention with that or talisman, just meet meet in that space um, out of the body, but truly being above the planet. And yeah, it was really powerful to experience it that way. And as we were meeting as a group, it was really interesting because there was a table of eight and then there was a bigger octagon and so the eight were the original planetary guardians, those who were alive. But then the other eight behind us, they were the ancestors and, and they were present with us as well. And I could just feel their presence standing behind us. And we all started engaging on this conversation on what we were doing and the issues of the earth and what we had to do to pretty much create resolution. And, and we were coming with this greater understanding because we had the wisdom, not only of our group together, but also of the ancestors. And it was as if we could truly just tap into this conversation and, and, and come to an understanding of what we had to do in our individual role in the earth where we were at. So then we were able to split and just carry on with our, uh, yeah, with our daily tasks. That's it's pretty amazing. I mean, just so you know, I have a table that's an eight table. <laughs> so, uh, that, that has the 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 bagwan of the the eight the three hexagrams of the Chinese I Ching. So, uh, that's it's pretty significant, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, that's it's great deep. to hear. Yeah, yeah. Subconscious, yeah, unconscious collective mm -hmm. just came forward, and I was like, Oh, I had seen the hexagon before, but yeah, like, wow, it's, it's so connected. I don't know why you're tapping into Elijah, what you're tapping us into, and, and now we're part of it. It's just like, so yeah, <laughs> well, it's 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 an honor to uh participate in such a way to such a high degree, and uh, all of you, you know, I, I bow to the spiritual masters that you all are and honor the path that you're on and um again it, it, i'm always there if something is actually going very bad in any way you know i will always be there to assist in whatever manner you need hmm. um all you gotta do is ask um i i will do whatever i can to help but you know if anyone's ever in an emergency situation and whatever emotional any safe just and you need me just Send me a message, and I will I will make myself available as soon as I can. Okay. Thank you, Elijah. Okay. Much love to everybody. Thank you, Elijah. God bless. Thank you, Cindy.